Have you ever heard of the Global Gateway Project? The goal of this project is to invest $305 billion in public and private infrastructure projects in Africa by 2027. The money for this project comes from a few different sources from within the EU. Brussels sees this project as a major achievement in the EU's efforts to expand its global sway. With these investments in green, they are trying to stabilize 3 million hectares of land and accomplish a renewable energy generation and protect its biodiversity. Sustainable agriculture, food systems and employment expansion will all be prioritized and will also receive fundings. This is fine and all, but can someone please explain what exactly Europe is doing in Africa? Are all these plans really aimed to help Africa, or is there a hidden agenda? The only way to find out is to watch the entire video. Hello and welcome back to Darkness Unraveled. As a result of the conflict in Ukraine, the EU is experiencing an increase in the economic importance of its connection with Africa. This is especially true for the energy sector, where it is urgent to diversify away from reliance on Russian-produced fossil resources. According to the International Energy Agency, Africa may be able to substitute for as much as one-fifth of Russia's gas exports to Europe by 2030. According to recent reports, energy companies based in Europe are considering undertaking projects on the African continent with a combined value of at least $100 billion. These countries include South Africa, Kenya, Mozambique, Namibia, and Tanzania. In the past few months, promising exploratory drills have been conducted in Namibia, which could result in the country's own new oil production of approximately 500,000 barrels per day. This highlights how much the conflict in Ukraine has turbocharged the priority that the EU has placed on Africa. However, this priority had already begun to be placed on Africa before the conflict in Ukraine. This was demonstrated by the launch of the Global Gateway Project in the previous year. This project is widely regarded as a counterpart to China's massive Belt and Road Initiative. At the EU Africa Summit in February 2018, up to $305 billion was committed to the development of public and private infrastructure across the globe by 2027. The money will be spent on developing renewable energy sources, mitigating the risk of natural disasters, and improving digital connectivity, transportation, vaccine production, and education. The EU27 is being hailed as Africa's most reliable global partner by European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen. An equal partnership centered on a new integrated strategy for and with Africa is what the EU is hoping to achieve, according to Joseph Borrell, the EU's high representative for foreign affairs. The EU sees itself as a counterweight on the continent to other prominent world powers such as China. With the power politics they are perceived to encourage, Africa as a champion of the EU's rules-based, multilateral approach to world order. While Brussels is serving as the driving force behind the European pivot, individual nations are also increasing their level of engagement with the continent. For example, France. The French President Emmanuel Macron recently visited the continent and hosted the first France-Africa summit of its presidency in the previous year. The UK is another European power with a renewed focus on Africa especially after Brexit. The UK is now trying to strengthen its relationships with key countries that are not members of the EU. During this time, other great nations are also stepping up their games to woo Africa with their charms. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov visited the region just one month ago. Both Lavrov and Russian President Vladimir Putin are interested in re-establishing the former influence that the Soviet Union had on the continent. To this end, Putin convened the very first summit of its kind between the countries of Africa and Russia in Sochi, Russia in 2019. The second summit of this kind is scheduled to take place in 2023. As a result, at a time when Europe's sanctions on Russia have entirely backfired, Russia is instead making significant progress in Africa, strengthening its investment and business links with it, only to further suffocate a Europe that is already in urgent need of relief. China, an ever closer ally of Russia, is also showing a significant amount of interest with the objective of better connecting its Belt and Road Initiative with the progress being made on the continent. It has been reported that the President, the Premier, and the Foreign Minister of Beijing have traveled to over 40 different countries in Africa over the last decade, making a total of approximately 80 visits. Additionally, Beijing is frequently the host city for China-Africa summits. 
With Russia and China now involved, the U.S. is more than ever attempting to increase the level of American engagement with Africa. Antony Blinken, the U.S. Secretary of State, visited Africa last month. He is the person responsible for kicking off the new United States strategy, which seeks to deepen the partnership with the continent to substantially increase trade and investments in both directions. With a particular emphasis on areas such as energy and climate, health, and digital technology sectors, the initiative is being framed by the administration as a way to promote shared prosperity between the U.S. and Africa. However, it is also intended, at least in part, to serve as a barrier between the U.S. and China in the region. This is because John Bolton, who served as Trump's former national security advisor, has admitted in public that China and Russia interfered with U.S. military operations and posed a significant threat to U.S. national security interests on the African continent. The increased interest of Western powers and China to work with African countries demonstrates that besides economic calculations, broad political considerations are also at play. The UK's impending exit from the European Union, the ongoing great power game between the US, Russia and China, and other factors are likely to contribute to an increase in interest in the continent. The overall ambitious goal of implementing a partnership between equals and taking the Africa-EU relationship to a new strategic political level is still largely unfulfilled seven years after the long-term vision was established in the joint Africa-EU strategy. The necessity of developing a new mentality and paradigm is, however, more pressing than ever before. This is especially true when one takes into account the significant shifts that have occurred on both continents throughout the past few years in terms of the social, demographic, political, and economic dynamics. Africa has developed into a pre-emerging continent while old Europe continues to struggle with slow economic growth and high unemployment rates. In Africa, the expectations about the future are generally positive. High growth rates, young populations, diversification of financial flows and partnerships, as well as a stronger internal vision of its plans and interests. This is in contrast to Europe, which is grappling with self-doubts about its future and position as a global actor and struggling to keep its contributions to international development. We can actually say that the tables have turned and that Europe almost begs its way to Africa in search of energy options, even though that now appears challenging for Europe due to Russia's expanding involvement in Africa. The fourth EU-Africa summit was an opportunity for the leaders of both sides to, among other things, think strategically about their collective continental interests and values within the context of a relationship that has been shared for a very long time and is complex and varied. The results reflect the underlying desire to move forward with the relationship based on reality. That's all for today. Feel free to let us know what you think about this video. And if you like this video, then please leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more amazing content. You can also check out our other videos that have been specially selected for you. Thank you so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one.